Hello and welcome to Against the Storm, patch 0.64, the modest update. We had some big news announced earlier this week, on Monday, I believe it was, there was a stream with the developers and the publisher. And in that stream, they answered a lot of questions that were asked from in various places, uh, including in the stream chat. Um, but they came for one big thing, one big announcement the 1.0 release date. That's also included here in the patch notes, and the release date for 1.0 is December 8th, which is just two weeks away. Uh, you know, give or take a day, depending on when you're watching this. That update, because that update is so close, this update will not have very many changes in it. In fact, it's mostly uh, about cleanup. Some of the things we've seen already, uh, in, a, in a manner of speaking, some, some balancing, some uh, UI, UX tweaks here and there, a little bit more in the, the lore system with Aunt Lori, but not much else. And that's good. Uh, bug fixes, of course, but not much else. There, There's just, you know, the game is, is done. Um, and they're just now kind of making sure that it is, it has all the polish that it needs. So we're going to go through and talk about the few things that are in this update. And then we will uh, just hype ourselves up for December 8th. Speaking of hype, uh, I am going to be updating many, possibly all, of the tutorials that I made just about a year ago when the game came to Steam. Which means, um, well, a lot of work, of course, but it means those uh, those tutorials will be up to date. For those of you who may be uh, watching and following the game, uh, may have been, but, uh, but don't like to purchase games uh, in a pre-1.0 state, in an early access state, I know there is a large population who has that, um, that, that, uh, you know, that line that they don't cross. And uh, so now's the time, if you've been watching the game, by the way, to keep an eye on it. Uh, if you are willing to buy it early, uh, it is on sale for the uh, Autumn Steam sale. It's 35% off, which in US dollars puts it just under $20, uh, which is the cheapest that you'll probably find it for a while again. Uh, I, I don't know, but uh, that, I mean, it may be that cheap again, but I don't see it being uh, much cheaper anytime soon. Uh, if you choose to wait till December 8th, uh, it might be the regular price of $30 then, or maybe a 10% off sale or something along that line, who knows. Uh, but it is going to be available, of course, on Steam, as well as Epic, GOG, and it's going to be included in Game Pass. So if you're a Game Pass subscriber and you've been watching this game, well, there you go. Uh, you'll get it uh, included in your Game Pass subscription um, come December 8th. All four locations will be available at the same time on December 8th. So, as I mentioned, there's only a handful of things in this update. Uh, and so it's not going to be a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of discussion. Um, a lot of the changes that are, that are larger, of, I mean, relatively speaking, revolve around the whole seal system. Uh, the whole, you know, collecting the seal components and, and uh, the, the guardian components and closing the seal. And that makes complete sense to me because, um, well, it was recently introduced, just, I don't know, a handful of updates ago, really. And um, it never was it never had a balance pass on it. So they've gone through and rebalanced a bunch of things re relating to the tasks you have to do to get the components or the parts of the Guardian. And then also the rewards you get for uh, completing the seal. Um, much, more, much more balanced. Also... There's a much larger um, pass or a, a much broader pass made on Glade events and orders to, to make a, a bit more variety in the rewards and also in some cases with the orders to make the rewards more applicable to the story behind the order or the, you know, the, the text within the order. So there's some balancing going on there as well. Uh, the only thing they had left on the early access roadmap that is not finished is Steam Deck support. Uh, it is partially supported. Uh, if you're a Steam Deck player, you probably will be okay. You'll, you'll have to get a, uh, you have to customize your key, your controls, and everything like that. But um, 
they do not yet have full verified Steam Deck status. So if you're intending to buy it for Steam Deck, um, maybe try the demo before you do, uh, because um, you may not enjoy it. Um, but it's still a great game to play with a keyboard and mouse. So if you have access to a keyboard and mouse, it's a great game to play with a keyboard and mouse. So, the list of content changes. There are nine new achievements. Uh, for now, they're only in Steam. Uh, they will be in Epic within the next few days. However, as all achievements are tied to a deed, if you have, if you finish the deed, you will get the achievement in Epic Game Store the next time you launch the game there and the, you've gotten the deed. So you don't have to get the achievement after getting the deed, uh, after playing to to get the uh, requirement. All you have to have is the deed completed and you'll get the achievement already. So there's a handful of um, a handful of ones based around achievements or deeds rather that were kind of bigger ones that were just missing an achievement where there were other deeds like it that had them. For example, there's uh, there are deeds for only four of the five playable species uh, where you have enough of the species, enough of their houses, and then usually a special building associated with them. So now there's a fox utopia, which was missing. Uh, 30 foxes, 15 fox houses, and a tea doctor required to achieve that one. And as I said, as long as you have the, as long as you complete the deed, you will get the achievement. You don't have to do the deed again, or you don't have to meet the deeds requirements again. There's some new conversations, as I mentioned earlier, with Aunt Lori. Uh, they have to do with um, reforging prestige level seals, uh, which were the ones that were missing. We had an update, last update, I think, where they added some of those uh, conversations for the regular level seals and so now we get the conversations for the prestige level seals the dialogue with aunt Lori will also include some conversation with or about how you work past viceroy and into the prestige uh, ladder so that'll be useful and speaking of the prestige ladder the there is a new one new feature coming to the game with the 1.0 release. So you won't have it in this patch. It'll be in the 1.0 patch. It's called the Queen's Hand Gambit. This will be a post Prestige 20 challenge where you have a limited amount of time to play through the entire an entire cycle, storm cycle, and seal the final seal all with certain restrictions placed upon you, and I think it gets more challenging each game you play. I think it like adds another uh, force mystery or another effect every time you play. Um, so we're gonna. I'm assuming there will be a 1.0 patch, even though this it's this is the last, uh, you know, the last two, every two week patch. Uh, I'm assuming there'll be a 1.0 patch on that Friday the eighth, and there'll be some patch notes including uh, details on the Queen's Hand uh, trials and gambit, but. That's what we know for now. Um, they talk about it quite a lot on, on the stream. Um, but as far as the details and in writing, uh, we don't have any of that really yet. So we'll have to look forward to that in two more weeks. Some of the recipes have been accelerated. For example, the porridge is faster now in the field kitchen. Uh, fertile soil spawns more around homestead ruins than it had before, which that's good because it it if you're gonna if you find a homestead which is super rare in a forbidden glade it should have like 20 30 fields around it or something i don't know what it is but it should have a lot there's it because it's got a huge range and there should just be a ton of fields it should just be how it works so that's good uh, i think if only i had one since they moved it to be a for uh forbidden glade only thing There are some cleanups on some perks. To make things um, more clear and cleaner and more organized.
two of the archaeologist office upgrades have been tweaked in the Scarlet Forest. The Ancient Strength now increases the carrying capacity of movement speed of all scouts, instead of, in carry, instead of increasing the carrying capacity of all workers in the settlement. And Carved in Stone no longer scales based on the Ancient Tablets and now increases Glade Event working speed based on reputation points gained from completing Glade Events. The working speed bonus has also been reduced from 10% to 7%. That one's a little bit, I would say, more controversial in a way, but I, it's fine for the, for the number of times you would see it and deal with it. I think it's fine, because it's only in the one biome. So, I think it's fine. Pickled Goods has been reduced from two stars to one in the beanery. I think they, like, every building was two stars, so they could try to balance that out a little bit. Rebalance reward, uh, resource rewards for almost all Glade events in the game. This is what I was mentioning, I think, at the beginning, where uh, they found that a lot of those rewards were based around kind of the same types of materials, or focused on a lot of the same materials. So now there's a lot different variety, a lot more different variety. That's still not correct. Uh, a lot of variety in what you can get from Glade events. It's not all the same kind of handful of things. So that's good, because now that there's so many different types of resources in the game, they're taking advantage of that variety. They also rebalance rewards across orders, so you can get a wider variety of resources from or completing orders rather than kind of all the same types of things. So there's a whole list of them, probably about 20 different orders that have been affected. I'm not going to list them all out here, but they swapped one item for another to, to increase the variety. They've also slightly increased the number of traders found in small glades. So opening small glades is a little bit more advantageous. A lot of um, UI UX improvements in this patch. Uh, you can now rebind the mouse buttons to options other than just camera movement. You can also rebind multiple functions to the same button, which might lead to unexpected behavior, so be careful with that. There's an option to disable all ingredients and recipes by default. That's interesting. I may turn that one on. Uh, because I'm oftentimes I'm ch changing a recipe to something else other than what the default is, or I'm changing a, or I'm forgetting and then getting mad at myself for not re recognizing what I did. There's a tooltip now explaining why the Rain Punk and Blood Rot tutorial is locked for some players. That's the new tutorials that are on the world map screen. Those are here on the side. So if this is uh, disabled, it'll tell you why now. Or unavailable, I guess, not disabled. Ore veins show a UI similar to the resource nodes now. You can now shift click the blight rot icon at the bottom of the HUD to stop all rain engines. That's really useful. Just that kind of do a bunch of things at once or do everything that matches similar to the way we can remove woodcutters from uh, by clicking the icon on the HUD. That's really useful. Um, same kind of thing. The seal contract UI now selects the next seal by default when you finish a cycle unless you manually change the selection. If you select your own seal at least once, the UI will no longer automatically progress through the seals. Oh, that's interesting. So once you finish your cycle and you pick the seals, if you continue to pick the same set of seals, it won't keep urging you forward. So if you aren't a prestige player, you don't want to be a prestige player, you're never gonna play a prestige seal, then it'll stop prompting you to choose those. It'll just keep the ones for Pioneer, uh, Veteran, and Viceroy selected. That's very useful. So 
a handful of new icons, including this one right here for seal fragments. The rest are all modifier rewards, so we won't see those easily here. They also improved the spacing in the world map modifier tooltips. I don't remember what they looked like before, but we can see that here. And main menu buttons are now responsive to cursor mouse over. Oh, nice. Handful of bug fixes as well. Uh, the game is, you know, nearly bug free. These are all very edge cases. So, or you know, maybe UI kind of display bugs or whatever. So they've 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 swatted a bunch of bugs. Um, most of them prompted by the community. A handful that they found on their own. And they've gone done another pass on game performance. So uh, we should see a little bit better performance on you know slower hardware, uh, older hardware in all biomes. That is it for this week's patch notes. It's all very minor stuff, a long list, but very, very minor stuff. We will be starting a new mini-series with a new town in the next day or so. So stop by and join us for that. And then the next time after that that we play, uh, it will be the 1.0 release. I haven't finalized my uh, decision for how I'm going to play the 1.0 release, but I think it will be a mixture of a new early game map, uh, or new early game save, I guess, and playing some here in the existing save with late game content after a few games in the early game. Um, this series will not be as uh, slow or explanatory as the beginning of the Steam series was. But I do plan to talk over a few things uh, when we get into into those first few maps. Uh, but for new players who may see this, um, even even if you don't see the uh, beginning of the 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 1.0 series, uh, you may um, ma may want to go back and watch the beginning of the Steam series. The early game hasn't changed that much. Most of the changes to the game were in later or more advanced systems. Um, so those first two maps where I was uh, being very slow and deliberate and talking through every decision um, or should still be almost 100% accurate still, uh, even a year later with 28 consecutive bi-weekly updates uh, under our belts. So feel free, if you're a new player, to go back and watch the beginning of the Steam series and also uh, to watch the beginning of the new 1.0 series uh, at your leisure, as there will be plenty of tips and content in there as well. We'll finish this up here for now, and I will see you all in the main series. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.